This video will explore the paper, BERT Can See Out of the Box. This study looks at how well BERT can attend to pre-trained visual embeddings and their text captions without much fine-tuning in order to ask questions about the text image pair, a task known as visual question generation. The authors show that BERT performs very well in this task without much fine-tuning of the image embedding, demonstrating the flexibility of these attention layers and showing the transferability of multimodal embeddings into these BERT models that combine inputs like code BERT, taking natural language and programming language pairs, or image BERT, which combines images and their text captions. Other examples include things like multilingual BERT, VilBERT, or video BERT. This video will explore the paper, BERT can see out of the box. This video will explore the paper, BERT can see out of the box, looking at how well BERT can attend to visual embeddings that come straight from a faster RCNN model without much fine tuning of the visual representations. This vision language BERT model is tested on visual question generation. BERT is one of the most popular models for natural language processing tasks. BERT works by having a sentence A and a sentence B and then using two unsupervised or self-supervised learning tasks to pre-train this model on massive text datasets. The first task is to mask out random tokens and predict the mass token, and the second one is the next sentence prediction task where you predict whether sentence B would follow sentence A. A lot of recent work has been looking at how to do multimodalities in BERT. So the idea of code BERT where you have a natural language sentence and then a programming language sentence, image BERT where you have the regions of interest from the uh, faster RCNN model combined with text input, and other things like VilBERT, video BERT that are looking at how you can combine multiple modalities in this BERT input representation, which is pretty naturally extended because you have this natural uh, sentence A, sentence B, the uh, segment embeddings, and it's a really interesting technique with the encoder attending to this whole sequence that makes it sort of easily extendable and easy to think about how you might uh, do multimodal embeddings with the BERT model. The idea of BERT seeing out of the box is describing how much fine tuning of the other modalities embedding you need to do in order to attend over the entire sequence. So when you add the regions of interest from image BERT into the pre-trained BERT model on text embeddings, how well can it already attend to these visual embeddings? And this is practically advantageous because if you're doing something like a vision language model, you might not want to have to uh, train this representation all the way from scratch, depending on your computational resources. It's also interesting with our understanding of attention. So attention definitely seems to be more flexible, the success of this study, because it's able to attend successfully on these pre-trained vision uh, embeddings without really having to fine tune them much. So it's definitely interesting to see the adaptability of attention. This also works in settings like multilingual BERT, where it trains on a monolingual corpus. So only training the BERT model, the pre-trained representations, is attending on sentence A in English and sentence B in English. But then later on, they fine tune it in multilingual applications, like sentence A in English and sentence B in French, and it performs really well in that. And it also seems to work with the images and you know code BERT and the video BERT. So it's really interesting to think of this extendability of attention to attend over these pre-trained embeddings. One of the most common applications of these vision language multimodal models is something called language grounding. These language grounding tasks and things like embodied AI or uh, like visual language navigation where you have some environment and then you're giving a language input like orient yourself so that the umbrellas are to the right, go straight and take a right at the first intersection. Google has recently released this new data set, the Street View Panoramas, where they're trying to have this uh, vision input that's grounded with the language and you can give it tasks to have it navigate the uh, environment. This is really interesting for this Street View data set, other things like uh, navigating houses, all these different applications in vision and uh, language grounding for the vision language models. Another recent update to these vision language tasks and data sets is Google's new additions to the Open Images V6 data set, now featuring localized narratives. So this idea of localized narratives is now when the author is describing the image, instead of just having bounding boxes around man, balloon, or grass and sky, or something like that, now what they're doing when they're uh, annotating these images is doing this localized narratives. So what they do is when they're describing this in the front portion of the picture, we can see a dry grass area with dried twigs. They're also going over this area with the mouse. So you have this vision information of where the mouse is going to describe, sort of like how I'm making these videos when I use the mouse cursor to go over the equations or whatever, and how they're doing this to ground the vision language. It's really interesting, these advancements in the data sets and tasks, and these models like BERT can see out of the box that are looking at how we can combine vision and language information in these models. The experiments in BERT can see out of the box are looking at how well you can take these visual embeddings from the faster RCNN model trained on the visual genome data set and integrate them with the text embeddings in the BERT model. So the idea here is to take 36 regions of interest from the faster RCNN model, and the first dim uh, dimension embedding of these faster RCNN regions of interest are about 2,304. 
and the BERT text embeddings are about 768 by one vectors. So you need to have this linear projection matrix W that takes the embeddings from the faster RCNN and maps it down into a compatible dimension for input to the BERT model. So these 2,304 uh, dimension vectors that come out of the faster RCNN region of interest are downsampled down to, 2, uh, to uh, 768 dimension vectors with this linear projection W. So then they go into the positional embedding that treats the uh, visual tokens like a sequence and then we have the BERT encoder, and then we're gonna talk about how they uh, rearranged BERT to be a decoder for the sake of application of these uh, questions. In the paper, the authors are experimenting with visual question generation, where you take an image and then you ask questions about what's in the image. For example, in this image, you have what is the color of the desk, what is the color of the table, what time is it because of the clock. So the data sets they use are this famous MS Coco data set that's commonly used for training these bounding box detection models. They also have a data set extended to MS Coco that is used for visual question generation. So I think the total data set is something like 5,000 uh, data points, and they have a training set of about 2,500, and then validation and test sets. They also use the visual question answering data set, which is probably the, the VQA data set is the most popular for visual question answering and combining these vision language uh, modalities. What they do is they reverse the data set, so they just take the input uh, question for the problem and use that as the target output. One reason to be interested in visual question generation is for its potential application for data augmentation with these question answering models. One example of this in natural language processing is they have these question answering systems where the input is a long span of text and the answer is somewhere within that text. So what they do is given conditioning on the original input text or the input paragraph or input Wikipedia article, they train a generator model like the GPT-2 to generate potential answers then they generate questions that align with the answers that come from GPT-2, and then they filter out these pairs of question answers that are used to augment the data set. So if we have these models that can do visual question generation, they can be paired with visual question answering filtering systems, and this kind of uh, pipeline is used for data augmentation, which can help to strengthen these uh, visual question answering models, these vision language models, and you can imagine transferring from a representation learned for visual question answering into something like the street view panorama language grounding task. All these kind of uh, representation learning methods can stack on top of each other to create stronger deep learning models. Another interesting area of visual question generation is this overall idea of learning to understand questions. This is a recent paper from the Allen Institute Break is looking to decompose questions to facilitate question answering models. So they take questions and they deconstruct them into the steps needed to take to answer these questions. And this is also really applicable for this uh, multi-hop reasoning task. Another example of why learning to ask questions is also as interesting as learning to answer them is demonstrated in this recent Salesforce paper, learning to retrieve reasoning paths from the Wikipedia graph. So in this case, they're looking at how to answer this question of multi-hop reasoning, where you have questions like, when was the football club founded in which Walter Otto Davis played at center forward? And you have to do this multiple hops to first search for Walter Otto Davis, find out which football club he played, uh, played for, and then hop over to the uh, football club to find the information about when it was founded. So this kind of uh, question asking capability of deep learning models helps it to reason across these large data sets and figure out how to navigate through the information. In the sake of these visual question answering models, it might not be as complicated as questions like this, but it's still interesting to think about uh, tasking these models with asking questions as well as answering them. In order to use the BERT model to ask questions, the authors need to restructure it to be a decoder. So decoders describe these models that are able to generate text. This is frequently done because they're trained with this autoregressive predict the next token task that can easily be extended to uh, generating text by seeding with something. You can imagine seeding it with like what, and then it would start to ask a question by just doing that predict the next token over and over and slide the mask as you predict the next token. So BERT is originally an encoder only transformer, meaning that it encodes the input sequence until it gets to this output layer. So the way the authors are gonna restructure BERT to work as a decoder, some of the previous techniques, they take this output layer from the BERT encoder and they append a new transformer decoder, like a small version of GPT-2 onto the ending of it. And then they filter the uh, outputs from BERT into that decoder model to generate the text. What they're gonna do here is they're just gonna use the uh, mask at the end of the sequence. So the BERT pre-training mass language modeling objective originally uses this mask token in the middle of sequences. And that's how it trains it with bi-directional context rather than just the left to right auto-regressive way. But for the sake of decoding in the BERT, they're gonna structure it as left to right, and they're just gonna move the mask to the end of the sequence and have it learn to ask questions. And they're gonna do this by fine tuning it on these data sets, such that it learns to uh, start its questions with things like what, where, how, such that it starts to generate questions.
The training pipeline in this paper Bert can see out of the box consists of first having the model have only access to the text input and learn to start asking questions by fine tuning on the uh, question generation data set. Then it has access to only the image input, but all the other weights are frozen. So it's just learning that linear layer, uh, the W projection, that goes from the higher dimensional embeddings that come out of the faster RCNN model and projecting them down to the 768 by one vectors that are form a compatible input to the BERT model. Then they combine the image and text representation and fine tune all the weights. These are their quantitative results on the visual question generation on the MS COCO dataset. It's tough to really make sense of this kind of a blue metric because it's looking for kind of like the n-gram overlap between human questions and then the machine generated questions. But you can still see the gap improving from previous techniques and you can see the difference between say uh, not doing the three-step pipeline compared to training from scratch and you can see uh, good performance with the image only representations, the caption only representations, and then the combined model. And then you see the comparison with human performance. But it, it's really a tough thing to quantitatively uh, like have an automated metric for scoring these visual questions because there's a lot of other dimensions to it like kind of the diversity of the questions how well it's taking in the uh, visual information so it's still interesting to see the experiments according to the, these metrics and how it closes the gap with human performance and improves over previous techniques but it's still definitely uh, tough to have automated metrics for this sort of similar to how uh, with generative adversarial networks when they generate images it's tough to automatically score how the quality of the generated images thanks for watching this explanation of bird can see out of the box an interesting study showing how you can take these pre-trained uh, visual representations from a faster rcnn model and project them into an input space into the bird model and it can already perform this kind of attention over the pre-trained embeddings to perform tasks like visual question generation Hopefully from this video, you also got a sense of why visual question generation might be interesting and how it can be used for vision language learning and these tasks like uh, language grounding in the Street View Panorama dataset. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.